Hello and welcome to episode 22 of the Nina Blanco podcast. Thank you so, so much for listening. It is Friday. That's when we release our episodes and we celebrate something very special on Fridays. Let's do it. It's Breakfast Burrito Friday! You know what it is. (laughs) yourself you made it to friday grab that breakfast burrito because you deserve it and it's friday and really do we need an excuse for a breakfast burrito i think no but if you do need an excuse this is it this is that excuse because it's breakfast burrito friday it's tradition that's what we do it's funny because um as i was screaming it's breakfast burrito friday right at the beginning there i noticed for the first time Bonzo he's really getting used to this whole podcast thing because he hangs out in the room with me while I'm recording this podcast and you'll see him in the background if you watch on YouTube he'll be playing with his toys um kind of like I don't know doing his thing in the background and almost every single breakfast burrito Friday when I scream when I yell at the top of my lungs it's breakfast burrito Friday he gets hyped up He like hears it and I'm yelling and I'm screaming and he gets all excited and he like starts to pounce around and stuff. This is the first time on a breakfast burrito Friday where I'm screaming that he just continued to lay down. He's laying down right now. He's not moving. He's passed out. He doesn't care that I was just yelling in this very small room that we're in. So uh, I don't know, just a little observation there. Bonzo's totally getting used to me yelling and screaming in the house because it's just such a common occurrence (laughs) in the Nina Blanco household. So kudos to you, Bonzo. He's getting used to it. Happy Breakfast Burrito Friday. Um, This week, I've just been kind of trying to focus on a new schedule. You know, I talked about trying to have a new schedule with the podcast and things that I'm doing for like wedding stuff and trying to go to the gym more and be more active and blah 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 and every day I'm trying to do something if I just give myself like three solid days of doing something physical I call that a win for myself I'm not going to do something every single day it's just not happening um so either I'm going to the gym or I would like to take Bonzo out to Sloan's Lake because we live pretty close to Sloan's Lake and we'll go there. And he, of course, loves the extra long walks. He, of course, loves being outside and it's something different outside of our neighborhood. So he love, love, loves it. And I do, too. And it's a longer walk, like two and a half miles or three miles, whatever Sloan's Lake is. Uh, But I'm finding myself already a little bit bored of Sloan's Lake. I need to mix it up. That's just how I am. I need need different scenery I need different things in my life and thank goodness that uh the weather it is going to be warming up because uh, you know then the hiking trails open up and then there's more options for me there but the other day I found myself like okay, I'm going to go to Sloan's Lake today. Do I want to go to Sloan's Lake today? And then I was like doing a Google search. Where in Denver, where else in Denver can I just take a good solid at least two and a half mile walk with Bonzo? Somewhere at a park, somewhere that's nice. In Denver, we've got a lot of parks, a ton of parks actually. And so, but some of them, you know, are on the smaller side. And so I want to find something bigger. And so, you know, I thought about the usuals. I saw, I saw City Park and then of course Washington Park. And I was like, well, I haven't been to Wash Park 
in a, in a while. Maybe I can go there. But then I was thinking about it, and I'm like, Washington Park is very narrow, so it seems kind of smaller. Although it is like two and a half miles all the way around, but like it's so packed all the time because it's one of the nicer parks. And but because it does have like it does seem kind of smaller, and it is constantly packed. I'm like, I don't, I don't know if I want to be around that many people right now. You know what I mean? So I was just like, meh, maybe Wash Park. We'll save that for later. So then I looked up City Park. For some reason on Google, Google was telling me that City Park was closed. I don't know if that's true, but it was saying that City Park was closed because unfortunately though just the homeless population in Denver and downtown um it just doesn't seem like anything's happening and nothing is being done to to help the homeless population and so the homeless population they kind of congregate in parks and stuff and so I guess they had closed uh I know they closed Civic Center Park a while back but apparently they closed City Park for a while um just because it was a little bit dirty and unsanitary and unsafe for people to be walking around and so I was like man that's a bummer and then I was like, well, where else can I go? And I'm honestly not sure. Um, I thought about, oh, well, Confluence Park, downtown, right along the river. That's fun. I've been there before. And then I was thinking about it. And again, uh, kind of with the homeless population uh, in downtown and around Confluence Park and under the bridges and stuff, I was like, well, maybe that's just not the safest for me as just a one person to be walking around even if it is in the middle of the day just out of you never know you know and so I just didn't feel safe about it um and especially with little Bonzo we love him of course we do we love Bonzo but um Bonzo's a chicken shit (laughs) he is he is he puts on a big bark but he's a chicken shit a little bit. Um, so I just, if I was ever in a situation where I needed Bonzo to help protect me, I'm sure he would do his best. I just don't know that Bonzo is a guard dog. You know what I mean? When I had Chester, it, it was Chester and I against the world. I trusted that dog with my life. He he literally saved me that one time that I got attacked by a dog. We both did. We had matching arm scars. Um, Uh, I'm getting emotional. I don't want to. Uh, I was, I was, uh, I was crying about Chester earlier today because I made a mistake of looking at pictures. Ooh, so sorry. Sorry. Just bringing him up right now is bringing up the emotions, but normally I can talk about him um, under normal circumstances and that's gotten easier, but you know, it's still hard. So sorry. Gosh, I hate crying in these podcasts. I'm so sorry. Um, But anyway, Chester was the best. He was definitely a guard dog. I just uh, don't get those same exact vibes with Bonzo. So anyway, yeah, just want to keep myself safe and keep Bonzo safe. And where can we go? And if you have any recommendations of favorite parks that have like a longer loop, I would love them. Um, Parks that I can go to, parks where, you know, we can be safe about it and uh, just enjoy the beautiful fresh air. But like I said, you know, spring, it's it's here and things are starting to warm up. Um, although with spring, you know, then the trails get muddy with all the rain and stuff, which that's natural. That's normal. And that's why I still need to kind of hang around some parks before we go onto the hiking trails because I just don't want to deal with the mud. Because Bonzo getting muddy, then my car getting muddy, and my shoes getting caked in mud. I don't want to do it, okay? I could barely clean my house. We talked about that. I'm not going to, like, clean my shoes and clean my cars, and I'm just going to avoid the mud in that case. So if you have some parks, some recommendations that I can go to um, around Denver, that would be sweet. Let me know. So I wanted to go over a couple of Denver headlines just because, I mean, yeah, spring is is here and summer's around the corner and things are starting to announce that they're going to be opening up. And there's just some cool things happening in Denver, uh, like Elitch Gardens. Elitch Gardens, it's a local favorite. Elitch Gardens, it's been around for so, so long and it's been in its current location for a hot minute now. There's rumors that yeah it might be moving in a couple of years which is a bummer although it it really is squished downtown it seems like there's no room for Elitch Gardens to grow at all if they wanted to add new rides and stuff like that like where it just seems like there's not a lot of space for a theme park in general the fact that they did do a theme park there for so long is so so cool I've never seen a theme park that close into like you know a big metropolitan area right in the city which is awesome and I do love 
it, but it does kind of hinder its chance to grow and expand and give new exciting rides and stuff like that. So I understand the need for it to eventually move. But Elitch Gardens did announce that it is going to be opening up this year again, starting later this month, April 30th. And by the way, happy April. We're officially into April. It's April 1st. I don't have any April Fool's jokes or anything for you. I'm sorry. I don't know. It's just like April Fool's. Everyone knows it's coming. You know what I mean? So it's like, why bother? But Elitch Gardens did announce that it is going to be opening later this month, starting on April 30th, which is exciting. And I can't wait to go. We we go at least once a year. Uh, it was uh, 2020, of course. Early in 2020, I think it was like January 2020, we bought season passes and then the pandemic hits and then everything closes down. So we couldn't use those passes for 2020, which was a bummer. We rolled it over into 2021. We went a couple of times. I wish we would have taken advantage of that a little bit more, but it was still early for things to open up. You know what I mean? Like I didn't want to go to the water park just yet. And in terms of going on rides and stuff, like, you know, you can keep your mask on whatever while you're standing in line. And I don't know, it was just still a little weird for me, but 2022, it's a whole different ball game. I actually just had a conversation with some people about like how it feels. It totally feels different now. It does. And like last summer in 2021, we're like, okay, we're into a, a year of this pandemic. We're learning. We're still wearing masks, but we're learning. And now vaccinations are starting to come out. And so people were like very excited for things to open up and for things to be normal again. But To be honest, for 2021, it was just still a little bit too early. We were still very much in that transition phase. And now, 2022, I really think that like this is it, right? We've we've gotten vaccinated, most of us anyways. If not, then, you know, if we still have to deal with uh, masks and stuff, that's all right whenever we get like, I don't know, variants that blow up like Omicron did over the winter. You know, we are aware of these things. We know how to handle it. Everyone has hand sanitizer everywhere now. So um, just for like all those things happening and we're kind of out of that transition period because we've transitioned. We know now how these things work. And I just feel like, yeah, this summer I'm excited. Let's do stuff. Let's go out. Let's have some fun. So Elitch Gardens, I'm definitely going to be hitting you up. They open April 30th in Denver. Glendale. Glendale Entertainment District has been announced. Um, all the work that they're going to do. They've kind of talked about this the last couple of years. It's a $150 million project, which means most likely it's going to be over $200 million by the time it's all said and done. It always happens. They always estimate, right? They estimate this giant number and here's all the things that we're going to do with that giant number and it's going to be great. And then, you know, in the middle of building contract work, there, there's always problems. Everything is always going to cost more than what they originally said. So if they're saying right now their budget is 150 million, I'm going to say 200 million at least. That's just the way it goes. But this is a 300,000 square foot entertainment district that they're going to put in Glendale. It is going to include a con concert venue, which is really cool on that side of town to have a movie theater. They're going to have, of course, the restaurants, the shops, Uh, something different that they're going to have is a sports book gaming hall, Colorado. We love our gaming, right? And especially for sports book, it's newer in the state. It's only been here a couple years. It's been really, really successful the last couple of years and businesses are really latching onto that. So there is, there's going to be a new sports book gaming hall at the Glendale Entertainment District once that opens up. They're also going to have, I think it's a 200 room hotel there as well, which is kind of cool. So lots of stuff. Um, I think the best part about it, because I, you know, I read through the article for you and this is just the highlights, right? The best part about it is that they're going to serve alcohol till 4 a.m. We don't have many places that serve alcohol till 4 a.m. 2 o'clock is last call for a lot of places. I've seen even 1.30, 1 o'clock is last call. And so this uh, Glendale Entertainment District, they're going to be able to serve alcohol till 4 a.m. And uh, that's kind of cool, you know, for all the partiers and stuff. You know, if they throw, they're saying they're going to have like restaurants and shops and stuff. If they throw a couple clubs in there, you got to throw a couple clubs in there because if you're open till 4 a.m. and you don't throw clubs in there, what's the point? You know what I mean? So that sounds pretty cool. Hopefully they do that. They are uh, going to be opening. They're saying now late 2023. So we'll see if they open by the end of next year, 
Hopefully, hopefully they do. Um, the one bummer about this, the one bummer about this is that they are taking over a park. They're building this on a park. They're taking away the park. It's Creekside Park. I don't know that I've been there necessarily, but, you know, I'm sure we've all driven by it, right? But the Glendale Entertainment District, it's going to be on Creekside Park, and they're pretty much taking over the entire park. So goodbye, nature. <laughs> and oh my gosh, did you guys see this headline? This headline freaked me out. So remember a couple weeks ago, <laughs> what is up with these crazy headlines in Denver? Remember a couple weeks ago, there was a headline. It was human heads were stolen out of a van and we found out that those human heads were for scientific research they were donors and someone carjacked this van I don't know that they know that they were stealing a box of human heads but they were stealing a box of human heads and that was like a big thing and I'm like whoa that's crazy now this tight uh headline came up and I was like what is going on an arm an arm was found at the bottom of a pond at the Botanic Gardens in Denver. A human arm. So I looked into it and I was like, what is going on? What is this? Like, did someone get murdered? And they like dropped the pieces in the middle of the day while like touring the Botanic Gardens. I'm like, like all these crazy things are going in my head, right? None of that. None of that at all. So it's crazy because uh, Botanic Gardens in that area and, of course, the historic Cheeseman Park, we've heard about Cheeseman Park being haunted. And if you don't know the story, well, Cheeseman Park used to be a cemetery and they wanted to move all the bodies of that cemetery into another location so that that way they could make it into a park, which they did. But um, some of the bodies got left behind. Yeah, and that's why it's still so haunted. And so there's been a lot of stuff. And so Botanic Gardens, it's kind of in that area. And part of Botanic Gardens was a part of that cemetery. So Botanic Gardens, that's also built on top of a cemetery, at least some parts of it. And so this human arm has nothing to do with like a missing person or like a murder or something gruesome like that. It has everything to do with the fact that Denver didn't do all the cleaning up that maybe they should have done when they were originally getting these bodies and um, trying to get them out. <laughs> So uh, my buddy, Dave, Dave J, who I did the party morning show with, he actually came out with a video before this story came out, which I think, I don't know, is that coincidental or is it suspect? I'm not sure. But he had a great, great breakdown of the story of Cheeseman Park and what happened and how did bodies get left behind. It's very interesting. So here he is. All right, this one's kind of creepy. Denver's Cheeseman Park started off as Prospect Hill Cemetery. That's not the unique fact. You may have already known that. But after years of neglect and complaints from the neighborhood, it was proposed that the site be converted to a park and the bodies be moved to nearby Riverside Cemetery. And many were. But it was cost prohibitive to some families, so thousands of bodies were left behind. The city tried to fix this by hiring E.P. McGovern, a local undertaker. At $1.90 per body, they were going to pay him to finish the job. Well, a few days into the operation, a local newspaper observed that many more children's caskets were being redeemed than had been recorded. Was he finding kids? No, he and his crew were chopping up bodies and putting them in the smaller caskets to double and triple his profits. Hashtag capitalism. It is estimated today more than 2,000 bodies remain. And as recent as 2011, bones have been found at the site. Bones sound good, huh, Tobes? Not so much. His little dog, Toby. So cute. Uh, but yeah, Dave posted that video and I was like, oh my gosh. And then this story happened and I was like, oh my gosh. But what a great breakdown of what happened. I mean, families couldn't afford to move their loved ones' bodies, which I think is a little bit messed up, by the way. Like, if you're going to move, we already did this, right? We already buried my loved one. We already paid for whatever, whatever. We did this, all right? And now you're asking me to pay to move my loved one's body to a different location because people in the area are are upset that it's a cemetery rather than a park. What do I pay taxes for? I don't know. That sounds like a tax worthy reason. But anyway, anyway, <laughs> um, it's just it's pretty crazy that bodies had to be moved. And the fact that I mean, there are leftovers, which is wild. And that whole undertaker story about chopping the bodies up to get more money oh my gosh that is wild so that makes me wonder like all the leftovers that were there I mean if you think about it back in the day when you had a cemetery it was just a plot of land I don't think anyway I don't think that they went through and they ha they didn't have plot numbers at that time
game and grid it out. And you know what I mean? They kind of just dug a hole, put the body in there, and called it a day. They didn't keep track of these things necessarily way back in the day. This is why we keep track of things now. So in case anything happens, if we need to move stuff, then things don't get left behind. But um, the fact that this did happen in our city a long time ago, and here we are finding body pieces still, it blows my mind. It's crazy, but it is like such a huge part of Denver history and it really makes you think and it makes you wonder. And um, at the same time, like it's not a scary story at all. It's just very interesting. It's just very interesting. So Denver Botanic Gardens, they're like, yeah, this happens sometimes. You know, when we're doing work on the ground, sometimes we'll find a, a bone that belonged to a person at one point in time. And it's not like this crazy thing, like they're used to it. But um, pretty wild, pretty wild. So the Denver Botanic Gardens, they said the work that they were doing is they're going through all the ponds and all the water that they have. And uh, they're basically replacing the lining in the ponds and stuff because the lining over time it's going to break down of course it is and then it's going to leak and so to just to help preserve water and be more eco-friendly and stuff it's time to you know replace those liners and stuff and so that's what they were doing we're replacing liners in a pond and in one of the ponds this bone this human arm bone came popping out and they're like oh just another day on the job because this used to be a cemetery (laughs) Hey, let's get into it. it Singer Lizzo is such a fan of the podcast that Dubs and I have that she got our podcast name tattooed on her ass. I mean, not really. So (laughs) what happened was Lizzo has announced that she is coming out with a brand new shapewear line. It is underwear. It is bras. It is things that you can uh, match up and you can just wear normally. You throw on a pair of jeans and you throw on her top. But, you know, it is stretchy and it, it feels good on your skin. And it is made for all body types from extra small to 6X. Uh, this is what Lizzo is doing. And so she named her shapewear line Yitty. I don't know why. She has not come out with an explanation as to why she named her shapewear line Yitty, but it happens to be the exact same name that Dubs and I named our podcast together. We have a podcast called Yitty. It is spelled the exact same way, Y-I-T-T-Y. It is all caps, Y-I-T-T-Y, and it's pronounced the same, Yitty. I don't know why Lizzo named her shapewear line Yitty. Obviously, there's something to it. She hasn't gone into an explanation as to why she's calling it Yitty as of yet. But for Dubs and I, we named our podcast Yitty because it stands for something. It stands for, yes, I'm talking to you. Yes, I'm talking to you, Yitty. So that's why we named our podcast that. And that was like, I don't know, a month or two ago that we did this podcast originally and we're still doing it. And then all of a sudden... Lizzo comes out here and her shapewear line is called Yitty and she has it tattooed on her ass. So congrats to Lizzo. I hope you find a lot of success in your shapewear line. Um, I think this is shapewear that is needed for for women of bigger sizes, you know, and like she said, she put it uh, extra small to 5X. So I mean, so many different sizes for so many different shaped bodies. And that is beautiful and wonderful. And I, I do think Lizzo will find success in it because she finds success in almost everything that she does. She's Lizzo, duh. But it's just funny that uh, her shapewear line also has happens to be the same name as the podcast that Dubs and I do together. Oh. The Foo Fighters are uh, going through some stuff right now. Of course, we heard about the death of the Foo Fighters drummer, Taylor Hawkins. Uh, They were down playing Lollapalooza in Brazil, I believe, and uh, don't have the full story yet, although Texology reports did come back and he did have quite a few substances in his body. Uh, His body has been returned to California, luckily, because, you know, they were performing in Brazil. He did pass away in Brazil, and it is just so, so sad. 
had um, the band, the Foo Fighters, they were going on tour. I mean, they were in the middle of tour. They were in Brazil performing, and then they had all these tour dates into the U.S. going on, like, all summer long. In fact, they were going to perform this year at the Bronco Stadium. There was a poster up for it, but the Foo Fighters have announced that they are going to cancel all of their shows after the death of Taylor Hawkins. It is so sad. I know that, you know, the bandmates of Foo Fighters, they've just got to be going through it that is awful um to have to experience and you're in the middle of this tour and not that the tour matters that part doesn't matter but it was more so you know you're with your buddies and you're doing something that you love for people that you love their fans and um not only do they have to cancel all their shows and feel guilt amongst you know some of that stuff but they lost their friend they lost their friend they lost their family for how long the Foo Fighters have been together performing their family man so it is just it's so sad and it really does break your heart rest in peace Taylor Hawkins Rumor Willis announced that her dad, Bruce Willis, is no longer going to be acting. Bruce was diagnosed with a medical condition that he's developed and it makes it very, very hard for him to communicate. Bruce has been diagnosed with aphasia, which does impact your cognitive abilities and may make it difficult for him to communicate with other people, whether that be just talking or being able to comprehend some things. And so um, it's just really, really sad to see such an, a legend in acting kind of having to hang it up. And it is due to some medical issues. He has been working really, really hard over the last couple of years, just trying to act his heart out, just trying to act in as many things as he could because you know it is assumed that the family knew about this for a while and uh, eventually knew that this day would come that he would have to quit acting and it seems that day has come and so for the last couple of years while he could he definitely made the most of it and he was able to act in a couple of different films and do what he loves and it's very sad that he's he's got to do this and he's got to step away from acting but at the same time you respect it you know it is is a medical thing that can came up. He's given us so many amazing movies over the years, so many great memories. And you think of Bruce Willis, you're like, yeah, I like that guy. I like that guy a lot. So Bruce Willis, we wish you and your family nothing but the best. The slap. Okay. Of course, we're going to get into this. So I got into this with Dubs on uh, Monday's podcast on Yiddy. And so I'm going to get into it a little bit here. Yeah, we saw the slap at the Oscars last Sunday. Will Smith barged on stage and slapped Chris Rock across the face after Chris Rock made a G.I. Jane joke about his wife, Jada. So Jada... I didn't know this. I don't know. Um, I guess she has been open about this for the last couple of years since 2018 that she has a medical condition called alopecia and alopecia for no rhyme or reason. Sometimes patches of your hair just come out and it is nothing you can do about it. It's just a medical condition. And so a lot of people with alopecia will tend to shave their head just rock a bald head, which is absolutely beautiful. And may I say that Jada totally rocks it. She does. Um, But uh, apparently Chris Rock, he didn't know. He didn't know that she had alopecia. And I'm going to say I didn't know that she had alopecia, although she had been open about it before. Um, He just, he didn't know. And he made a G.I. Jane joke uh, and it kind of was geared towards her bald head, which yes, looking at it now, knowing that it is due to a medical medical condition is in bad form. It's in bad taste. Sure. But him not knowing that, eh, and Will Smith barging on stage, slapping him, it's very unprofessional. You are in a room full of peers. And so there's a lot of arguments on, you know, who was right, who was wrong. Will was just defending his wife. What he did was right. Oh, but no, what he did was wrong because you can't do that to another comedian. By the way, if you're a comedian, you're hitting another comedian for making a joke. And so there are just so many things just so thrown up in the air. Now on Yiddy, I threw out that I think that at the end of the day, this is a little bit Jada's fault only because Jada has put a lot of pressure on her relationship with Will, on her marriage with Will, how Will handles things within their family. And when this first happened, I was like, Will is a broken man. I see a broken down man, a man who has been beaten down by his peers, by social media, by, you know, the world as 
you're a lousy husband. You're a lousy father. Your wife cheated on you and it was your fault. She put the blame on you. And they've been very open about this. Um, But at the end of the day, what I saw, what I saw on stage was just a broken man who was like, nope, I can't take any more of this. I can't allow anyone to say anything about my family anymore. And so I'm going to do something about it. He definitely reacted in anger. He reacted in emotion. It was way over the top and not appropriate. Although part of me just feels for Will that, yeah, he's been the center of attention in all the wrong ways over the last couple of years. And it just sent him over the edge. Do I think that they should take away his Oscar? No. I don't think an Oscar's ever been taken away from someone before who has won. Do I think that he should have stayed at the show? Maybe not. There's a lot of talk about this, too, on whether or not that the officials at the Oscars asked him to leave. There's been conflicting reports. There's been reports one second saying, like, yeah, producers at the Oscars asked Will Smith to leave, and Will Smith said, no, absolutely not, I'm staying, and he refused to leave. But then there's other reports coming up saying, no, Will was never asked to leave. In fact, he was asked to stay by the guy who runs the Oscars himself, His name is Will Packer. So uh, it's interesting that there's conflicting stuff that's coming up. So it's like we don't know the real answer whether or not Will was asked to leave. I'm leaning towards no, he was not asked to leave because I couldn't imagine it. Just think about it. Like think about this industry, okay? Hollywood, movies, acting, Will Smith. He's a staple. He's huge. He's an A-lister. He absolutely is an A-lister. They're not going to ask him to leave just because of that. That's just how Hollywood works. I'm sorry. But maybe this results in some disciplinary action where Will is not invited at the Oscars in the future because of this. Now, we don't have an official answer yet as to what the Oscars is going to do. Supposedly, they're trying to come up with some sort of disciplinary action. We'll find out. I don't know. Will Smith did issue an apology to Chris Rock and to his peers. And I don't know, man, this whole thing is very unacceptable. Just at the end of the day for Will Smith to go up on stage, it was unacceptable for Kanye to go up on stage. And that was like the MTV Awards. OK, this is the freaking Oscars. You don't do that. So it's not OK what Will did. It's not OK, I guess, that a joke was made off of someone's medical expense, but nothing was handled right. So I don't know the right answer. I don't know the right answer because every single thing in this scenario, it just started off in the wrong. So I don't know the answers. I do think Will should be, I don't know, maybe just uninvited at the Oscars because that is unacceptable and they do need to make an example of him. But so far they have not made an example of him. They've only given him an Oscar. Okay, that does it for me. That does it for episode 22 of the Nina Blanco podcast. Hey, if you do have a park around Denver that you like to walk around, that's like a decent loop, please let me know because Bonzo and I would love to check it out. DM me on my Instagram at the Nina Blanco. Thank you so much for listening. Yeah, we're going to play this one more time. You know what it is. Have a wonderful Friday. Treat yourself. Have a good weekend. Bye.